shrimp. An apple pie. Dad likes pecan. Oh, well, in that case, I can... Love to drive? Visit the Start Your Own Legacy Winter Sales Event for leases starting at $2.89 a month at your local Infinity Retailer. The perfect gift. One carat three stone and halo rings, $6.99. One carat forever rings are just $9.90. Diamond bands, $2.49 to $3.39 per carat. Diamond studs are $3.99 per carat. Thousands of gifts guaranteed to appraise for double. The Jewelry Exchange Bethesda. Good morning, America. This morning, the Arctic blast. Snow piling up in the Midwest. Drivers dealing with whiteout conditions. Up to a foot and a half of snow predicted with bone chilling temperature where the deep freeze is heading next crime to pass holdout senators coming around to that new tax bill the biggest overhaul in a generation i know everyone's lives will be better off under tax reform what's in it what's not and will it put more dollars in your pocket? New charges, the soccer coach who vanished with a teenaged girl, the center of a days-long manhunt. He's now facing a judge. Sir, did you understand what it was that I told you? What we're learning about their journey as his lawyers suggest their runaway plan may have been the teenager's idea. And blockbuster opening, The Last Jedi, a force to be reckoned with at the box office. Fans packing theaters across the country, showing their passion and paying tribute to a princess. Will it be the biggest weekend ever? Live from ABC News in New York, this is Good Morning America. <laughs> Hey, good morning. Many of us here on set uh, feeling somewhat uh, culturally ignorant this morning because we haven't yet seen the new Star Wars movie. Uh, I have tickets for tomorrow with my wife, Paula. I know you're going as well. I'm going. Have you seen it, Tony? I haven't seen it yet, no. Ronnie, have you seen it? Uh, I have not seen it. I'm going with Dan's wife, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to get really awkward. I didn't tell you about that, did I? <laughs> wow, this is a whole different kind of show. <laughs> <laughs> Buy an extra ticket for Ronnie yeah, and some popcorn. Yeah, he likes lots of butter on it. Uh, we're going to have much more on the new movie coming up from Tony Reale, yep. who is in for Adrian this morning. But we're going to start here with a pair of quick moving storms bringing frigid temperatures and lots of snow some places getting over a foot that's a lot of snow to shovel a look at this overnight the snow creating chaos in major cities in the northeast check out the low visibility at the empire state building i promise you it's somewhere Where in is this it? picture we also have some shots of a wedding party in philadelphia they got caught out in the elements they look happy Nonetheless, it's good luck if it rains on your wedding day, but what if it snows? I guess it's even a better. Form. It's yes. a form of rain. Mm -hmm. It's frozen. Uh, so where are these storms now <laughs> and what's coming? Showing off for meteorological expertise. <laughs> this no, morning. I'm going to let Paul meteorologist Harris. Mike Taylor show off his uh, expertise. He's joining us from our affiliate in Baltimore. He's in for Rob this weekend. Mike, good morning to you. Hey, good morning. Happy to be here. You know, this system, I got to tell you, if you were in this last night, I hate to remind you, but we had some rough stuff passing through the area. Just take a look at the roads over in, near Philadelphia. You know, the police had to really orchestrate the traffic. The morning commute was fine, but man, the drive home, the snow could not have arrived at the worst possible time. And that's just one scenario. Take a look at Erie, Pennsylvania. We had not only trucks, but also cars sliding off of the roads. And we had some snow squalls. We reports of seeing some of that lightning as far as just convective snow bands flaring up. That system itself is starting to really scoot off towards the east. Now we're still seeing some of these snow squalls still passing through. It's going to die down. But one thing I'm going to mention to you, the colder air, it is really starting to push in. We still have winter weather advisories, lake effect snow warnings in effect. And we're going to go from slush to crunch to check out the bitter cold that's going to be moving in. Northern Minnesota, negative 13 degrees. Very cold air is going to be pushing in. But that's not it. We'll be talking about some warmer conditions moving in. Have the details coming up in just a few. Well, Mike, we want to welcome you uh, to GMA. We don't welcome yeah. that bitter cold weather, nope. and we're going to check in with you a little bit later. We want to move on now to the major developments out of Washington, including the Republicans who are on the cusp of passing a huge historic tax bill by the end of the year. If it passes, it will be the first major legislative victory for President Trump and the GOP, but it comes as there are new developments in the Russia investigation. Matt Dowd is standing by with analysis, but let's start here with ABC's David Wright, who's right there at the White House. David, good morning to you. Good morning, Dan and Paula. The holiday rush looks a little bit different here in Washington as Republican lawmakers scramble to pass a tax break before they break for vacation themselves. And the pieces do seem to be falling into place. The president even pushing back his departure for Palm Beach, hoping to sign that first big piece of legislation. 
Republican lawmakers believe they have the votes needed to pass the biggest tax overhaul in a generation. The House and Senate compromise bill more than a thousand pages long. I know everyone's lives will be better off under tax reform. Republicans can afford to lose two votes in the Senate and still have the measure passed, with Vice President Pence breaking the tie. Tennessee's Bob Corker was the only Republican to vote no on the initial Senate bill, insisting he couldn't support anything that adds to the deficit. Never, never, ever, ever. Now, he's come around. So has Florida's Marco Rubio and Maine's Susan Collins, making it likely this measure will pass. The final bill is expected to add $1.5 trillion to the deficit, slashing the corporate tax rate nearly in half, but also doubling the standard deduction for those who don't itemize. The bill will still allow popular deductions for mortgage interest, student loans, and state and local taxes, but the caps on some of those deductions will be lower. The tax bill is one of two big items on the president's radar. Next week, his lawyers are expected to meet face-to-face -face with special counsel Robert Mueller and his team, a rarity. The president's lawyers are hoping to hear that Mueller's probe into Russian meddling and possible collusion by the Trump campaign is nearing an end. Not clear Mueller will oblige. There is absolutely no collusion. I didn't make a phone call to Russia. I have nothing to do with Russia. Everybody knows it. On Friday, ABC's Jonathan Carl and others pressed the president about whether he'd consider pardoning his former national security advisor, who pled guilty to lying to the FBI and is now cooperating with the special counsel. Trump wouldn't rule it out. Flynn, would you consider a pardon for Michael Flynn? I don't want to talk about pardons for Michael Flynn yet. We'll see what happens. Let's see. Getting back to the tax bill, uh, the Republicans say that for the average American family earning $75,000 a year, it'll mean an extra $2,000 in your pocket. But the Democrats say that some of those uh, lower and middle class tax cuts are like teaser rates on a mortgage. All of the individual tax cuts are set to expire in 2025. The corporate tax rates, the corporate tax cuts, however, remain. There's a lot to be explained about the, the tax cut bill. Before we let you go, David, uh, Senator John McCain is receiving treatment for his cancer right now. Our thoughts go out to him. Um, is he expected to be back in time for the vote? And if not, what kind of impact could his absence have on getting it passed? Senator McCain is in the hospital at the moment. He's, of course, battling brain cancer. His friends and family say that they hope he will be back on the job very soon. Uh, but even if he doesn't make it back in time to vote on the tax bill, it's likely that the Republicans have the votes they need to pass it without him. Dan and Paula? David, thank you. We're polling for Senator McCain this morning. Let's bring in ABC News political consultant Matthew Dowd. Matt, good morning to you. Good morning. Let, let's just start here with uh, General Flynn. What are the political risks for Donald Trump if he pardons Michael Flynn? Well, not to use, not to overuse a monopoly uh, analogy, but he's taking a chance by presenting a get-out-of-jail-free car in the midst of this. And I think it's either one, Bob Mueller's not a dumb guy. And my guess is Bob Mueller's gotten most of the information he needs from Michael Flynn if he's going to move any further on this, that the fear of a pardon of keeping the information, the fear of him getting a pardon so he won't cooperate, I think is gone. I think it puts Donald Trump in an interesting position because you're basically holding out the promise of a guy that could be a witness against you that you might part of them. So it is a question that somebody could ask is, is there an obstruction of justice claim involved in just this promise of that possibly happening. And a conflict of interest. Okay, let's go back to the tax bill. Um, it looks like this is going to pass. Um, could this be a huge victory? How big of a victory could this be for the GOP and for Trump? I think we have to separate a legislative victory, which we would be a big legislative victory, from a political victory, which I don't think it will be. I think the Republicans have fooled themselves to think that passing an unpopular tax bill pushed by an unpopular president through an unpopular Congress is going to be helpful to them. If you take a look at the tax bill and, and look back at 2010 when the Democrats passed Obamacare, which was no benefit to them, the lowest point of Obamacare and the lowest point of, of President Obama was higher than where Donald Trump is today and where this tax bill is today. I think it's going to create another part of the wave next year. But it's a problem. I think it's going to be a political problem for the you don't, the, you don't the think it boosts the economy in some way that would That's help the Republicans? That's what they're hoping Republican? for. Well, I, I think what's, what's gone on with the economy is there's a huge separation between what the economic indicators that we've all talked about 
and what the political indicators are. Right now, Donald Trump's got a huge setting records on the stock market. The unemployment's at 4%. Everything th there seems to be going well. But two-thirds of the country think we're on the wrong track. And 59% of the people disapprove of Donald Trump on the economy. So I don't think he's going to get any benefit on it. All right. Thanks, Matt, for your insight. And it's Thanks. great to have you yeah, here. It's, nice it's to have great you. to have you here. And a monopoly analogy today. Usually it's a sports metaphor. Something I don't understand usually, yeah. but I got you that under, one. You got Monopoly? Yeah, I did. I yes. got it. We got that. <laughs> yeah. You could do Connect Four. We could yes, do a lot absolutely. Of tic Tac Toe. We Just could. checkers, not chess. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. And we want to stick with politics. We're about to show you a moment in Congress that is going viral this morning. It involves one of President Trump's nominees for federal judge who gets grilled by a Republican senator and he flounders through the questioning. ABC's Kenneth Moten is in Washington with that story. Kenneth, good morning to you. Good morning, Dan. It's definitely one of those did you see it moments. The Republican majority has pushed through many of President Trump's judicial nominees, but after this week's hearing, at least one top GOP senator on the Judiciary Committee says he can't support Matthew Peterson. I'd be struggling to, to, to remember. This morning, the judicial nominee stumbles seen across the country. Can you tell me what the uh, Dobert standard is? Uh, senator Kennedy, I, I don't have that uh, readily at, uh, at my disposal. Matthew Peterson grilled on Capitol Hill, nominated for a lifetime federal judgeship by President Trump. Have you ever tried a jury trial? I have not. Civil? No. Criminal? No. Bench? No. State or federal court? I have not. But the lawyer who serves on the Federal Elections Commission struggled to answer basic legal questions. Do you know what a motion in limine is? Uh... Yes, I haven't. Um, I'm, I'm, again, my uh, background is not uh, in litigation. Video of the awkward moment now viral. Democratic Senator Sheldon Whitehouse, who sits on the Judiciary Committee, tweeted the video with the caption, Who boy? The questioner, Trump supporter, Republican Senator John Kennedy. You can't just walk into a federal courthouse for the very first time and say, here I am, I think I want to be a judge. It just doesn't work that way. This week, President Trump set a record. The most appellate court nominees, many conservative, confirmed in a president's first year. This is a president who's focused on making sure we have judges in place that understand what their role is. And that's not to create law, that's not to uh, change right. laws, but it's to be actually focused on the Constitution. The White House is standing behind its nominee, Matthew Peterson. A spokesman says the media and the president's political opponents are trying to distract from the record number of judicial confirmations. Dan and Paula. Except the senator doing the question. <laughs> Questioning was a Republican. Uh, Kenneth, thank you. Uh, we want to move on now to the new developments to tell you about in the case of a high school soccer coach who ran away with a teenage student. Ryan Rodriguez and Caitlin Fresina were at the center of a nationwide manhunt. The coach went to court and claims it was the teenager's idea to run away in the first place, and ABC's Ariel Reshef has the story. In an orange jumpsuit, Ryan Rodriguez stoic as he appeared on screen before a Florida court for the first time. The judge charging Rodriguez with a second felony, sexual activity with a minor. Sir, did you understand what it was that I told you? According to the charging document, Rodriguez engaged in sexual relations on multiple occasions with 17-year-old Caitlin Fresina. If you lie to me and I find out, I will hold that against you. The 27-year-old former soccer coach vanishing with Fresina on November 26, sending federal agents on a days-long manhunt up the East Coast. The two eventually detained in a traffic stop on December 1st in Syracuse, New York, more than 1,000 miles from home. Do you have any comments about it? Rodriguez arrested and extradited to Florida. The latest charge upgraded to first-degree felony because Rodriguez was in a position of authority over the teen, who was a student at the school where he worked, he was good friends with her parents. We've known him for several years through the soccer and, and the school and everything. Fristina's mother seen in court at the state prosecutor's side, arguing Rodriguez knew what he was doing was wrong, but still continued the relationship. But defense attorneys already foreshadowing their case, saying it was the teen who masterminded the plan. Her own statement was that she did most of the planning. The two were caught under 200 miles from the border with Canada. Authorities say Rodriguez was trying to save up some money to leave the country with Fresina. He faces up to 30 years in prison. His bond is set at $125,000. Rodriguez has not yet entered a plea. He's due back in court, guys, on December 20th. An extraordinary defense. It was her idea.
Ariel, thank yep. you very much. Really appreciate it. A lot of other headlines this morning, and for that, as always, it's over to Dr. Ron Claiborne. Good morning, <laughs> sir. Good morning to you, Dan and Paula. Good morning, everyone. We're going to begin in California, where powerful winds are fueling the massive Thomas fire, now threatening homes in Montecito and areas along the coast of Santa Barbara. 8,300 firefighters on the front lines of that stubborn wildfire that has already claimed the life of one rescuer, firefighter Corey Iverson, the first firefighter killed in the line of duty battling this blaze. The Thomas fire has already scorched nearly 400 square miles and forced more than 90,000 people from their homes. Also in California, the ex-wife of former NBA player Lorenz, Lorenzen uh, Wright is now under arrest, accused of killing him seven years ago. Wright's body was found in a field in July 2010 with multiple gunshot wounds. Billy Ray Turner uh, was charged with first-degree murder in Wright's death. Wright played uh, for 13 seasons in the NBA before retiring. And Hollywood is responding to the growing number of sex abuse claims against some of the biggest names in that business by forming an anti-sexual harassment commission. Anita Hill, who uh, accused Supreme Court Justice Clarence, Th Clarence Thomas of sexual harassment during his confirmation hearings in the 1990s, will head that commission. The group forming, forming that commission includes the head of Lucasfilms. They say the goal is to foster change throughout the industry and create the culture of respect. In San Francisco, officials have now closed the city's aquatic park. This after two swimmers were bitten by sea lions in less than 24 hours. One person was bitten on the arm, the other on the leg. It's unclear if the uh, same sea lion was involved in both incidents. And finally, Carolina's Panthers defensive linebacker Thomas Davis stepping up to help some young athletes in North Carolina. This fall, the Harding University High School football team once considered one of the worst in the Tar Heel State. They won the first, its first uh, state championship in football since 1953, but some of the players couldn't afford the $400 a championship rings. Davis then heard about it and donated 15,000 bucks to pay for the rings for everyone on that team. I love that. that. Yeah, and that's nice. something those kids are going to, it's something tangible they can hold on to yeah, for exactly. the rest for of For a them. lifetime. Yeah, They'll be wearing them when they're cool. 85. Yeah. That's Where's really your cool. championship yeah. ring? Yeah, uh, didn't, uh, my badminton team This didn't is quite a championship of a different kind. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I did get married, so I do have a wedding ring. Bianca is. Yeah. You, you don't have the Colby Mules uh, championship <laughs> ring? My football team didn't quite make it. All right, we want to send things back over to the weather department. Rob Marciano, as we mentioned, is off this weekend, so we have meteorologist Mike Taylor from our Baltimore affiliate, WMAR, filling in. Mike, it's great to have you here this morning. Hey, uh, thank you. It's nice to be here as well. And unfortunately, we're talking about another extreme fire danger for Los Angeles. You know, unfortunately, they're dealing with that Thomas fire now, the fourth largest on record, and it has the potential to even go beyond that. Wind alerts are in effect. These winds are really going to pick up. Red flag warnings are in effect for many locations around Los Angeles, mainly because of the winds, what they're going to be doing. Right now, they're flowing inland. Therefore, the relative humidity is up. But as we look at the Santa Ana wind starting to push back in, that dry desert air mass type wind flow is really going to dry things up. So that's going to be a concern into the overnight, kicking up the winds, bringing back the drier conditions. Not a good thing. Uh, but just looking at the Saturday outlook, things look pretty good. Wichita, 61 degrees and even seeing some heavy snow over in the Rockies. It's going to be good for ski resorts and things of that sort. So things are going to be pretty good in some spots, but a lot to watch on the weather front. That's a look at what's happening nationally. Here's a look locally. Isolated slick spots not out of the question this morning, especially on anything that was untreated yesterday. Here's a look at our start temperatures to kick off our Saturday, still below the freezing mark in the D.C. metro. So bundle up if you're heading to Reese across America early. But by this afternoon, temperatures get closer to average and we can expect lots of sunshine today. For tonight, temperatures will drop back into the 20s to low 30s. Mostly clear skies, but heading to any holiday parties or perhaps the Capitals game, definitely needing that extra layer. So unfortunately, it looks like those fires over in California is going to be a cause for concern in the coming days. Once again, just can't seem to break that pattern. Hey, by the way, um, thanks for filling in for Rob. I knew I liked you when you told me you were from Michigan. How about you know that? Surrounded by Michiganders. You're Jackson. <laughs> That's right. He's from Detroit. Motown Mike. Right. Yep. Have Motown you seen, Mike. Have you seen the new Star Wars movie? I haven't. So that's and, 0 for 5 at the table. And you know oh. what? I have to actually get caught up on all of the Star Wars. I haven't seen one Star Wars movie. This Not will be, the first this will be my first one. You are you. Yes. You're start with this, one. this will be my first one. You know what? I really resent you for being oh. so young. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stunned like, you admitted yeah, that on I national TV. TV. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to, going to go see it. I'm yeah. not going to be able to hide my jealousy for the rest of the, the rest of the show this morning. <laughs> but good job this morning. Thanks for yeah. being with us. Yeah, it is great it. to have you. Uh, speaking of Star Wars, the newest Star Wars film, it is primed to be the hit of the galaxy. Yeah, the premiere of The Last Jedi is expected to be one of the biggest domestic openings ever. ESPN's Tony Reale, one of our favorite.